Ready? Ah! <laughs> Sorry, Dave. <laughs> no, we I started laughing. We did it. I'm so good. Okay, oh, wait, Dave. Okay. Wait. Oh, I'm so excited because we did it at the same time. <laughs> Welcome I know for the back, first guys, time. to the You Can Sit With Us podcast. Yes. I'm Brittany. And I'm Bridget. And you always have a seat at our, our table. table. Just pretend there's one here. <laughs> we already know it's metaphoric. I think that's the Yes, okay. yes, yes. Yeah. So today we are talking about a struggle that we all face. Yes. As Christians. Yes. A mm-hmm. real big struggle mm-hmm. that you have asked me about a lot, that I have asked people about a lot, that I've asked God about a lot, that I think we've gotten questions a yeah. lot about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's a hard one. But before we get there, what's your favorite, favorite thing, thing of, the, of week? the week? We should probably do like a fun like song to enter into that. Okay. Like what's Favorite thing of the week. Mm-mm. Favorite thing of the week. Mm-mm. Favorite thing of the week. <laughs> so, Brett, what's your favorite thing of the week? <laughs> um, okay, so my favorite thing, similar to um, Last what I said. One of recordings. Yeah, mm-hmm. in our other episode. Yeah. Um, it's an experience that I had. Okay. So I went to Miami this past weekend with uh, a few people from our creative team mm-hmm. at church. Mm-hmm. And it was just... Uh, like everything not only I needed and mm-hmm. more but everything that we needed as a team yeah and more um like from the inspiration just of Miami itself mm-hmm. and all of the street art and the food and just the culture right. and like being able to go to stores that I haven't been able to go to in so long like Kith which is like one mm, of I'm my favorite stores in New York okay it's like a very like hipster streetwear okay. And, like, they have the dopest sneakers there. So, hipster. When you say hipster, you're not talking about, like, 70s, right? That's hippie. See? See? Someone like me, <laughs> who is not fas- fas- fashion. <laughs> <laughs> Who's not fashionable. <laughs> who is not fashion trendy. I don't know these terms. Hipster. Okay, it's not even really hipster, to be honest. Hipster, like, the epitome of hipster is Urban Outfitters. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But um, think like Soho, like fashion, streetwear. Okay, like, okay, yeah. You know, when, when people I hear wear hipster, like real, like, like old, different, unique uh-huh. stuff. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. That. Okay. Um, but Kith is one of my favorite stores, and they also have Kith Treats, which is like a, a subsidiary of their company where they have an ice cream store. But yeah. it's like dope because it's ice cream store that's like aesthetic and stuff, and it's just a vibe. Cool. They actually had a shirt there. I wanted to buy it, but... It was super, super big, and it was also really expensive, so I'm like, I would have. I'm the type where I, mm-hmm. I will spend a good $70 to $100 on a really good tea. Like, I used to love Bape, and Bape teas used to be $72. Yeah, now they're like 100 You're buggy, but, girl. So the shirt was like Sprite. Like, they had like a line of like soda shirts, mm-hmm. so the Dr. Pepper and stuff, but the Sprite one said Holy Spirit. Ooh! It was so cool. Oh, yeah, so I, would, I probably would have spent So um, anyways, the ice cream was phenomenal. When I tell you, <laughs> I got the wifey, and it's like... um. Their thing is, like, all of their ice cream is made with cereal. Okay. It's so cool. cool. Yeah, and I got, like, um, I don't know the cereal. It was kind of, like, Crave, but it was hazelnut. Oh, my gosh. It was, like, Nutella. A Nutella-infused soft serve, but just the texture of it, like, it was just perfect. Oh, wow. And I'm a harsh critic. And I I got the non-dairy coconut-based one. And And it was was still good? Consistency, rich, all that. Okay. And then we got in, like, right in that same building, they had, like, a parking garage. But in the parking garage, they had, like, this really cool, like, free thing. You just go to the top on the through the elevator, and they had, like, a pink slide that you could slide from one level to the that. next. Story, yeah. They had, like, a net that you could go down, and it was really cool. And one of my favorite things from the trip was that we did, um, we hopped on the Wes Anderson, Wes Anderson trend okay. that's trending right now in, like, um, Instagram reels and, and stuff like that. And Wes Anderson is a very famous director. Okay. Um, pretty sure he made Nightmare on Elm Street and, like, okay. just some other movies. But he has a very unique cinematic look okay. in which it's very like kind of like dun, 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 dun. like okay. the music is like i don't know it's like okay. very like dainty in a sense and okay. it's very like ooh and like so the trend is like oh don't don't you dare I make your miami that. trip look like a wes anderson film i saw and so that. we did that and okay. it was so fun oh wes craven wes craven <laughs> I'm dead. Oh, so this just in, Wes Anderson did not create create the Nightmare on Elm Street. That was Wes Craven. <laughs> Wes Anderson. The Grand, Budapest, the Grand Budapest. Which one? Moonrise Kingdom. Moonrise Kingdom. I don't know none of this. Okay, I never watched any of those. Yes. 
Honestly, like yes, I, when you mentioned Corky, movies. when you mentioned Corky and like that stuff, it definitely like has my interest. Yeah, I, I find it it's fun. very. It was very colorful, very like. Oh. Uh, part of the movie is not just the plot and stuff; it's the visual yeah. experience of like the framing and like the Bill colors. Murray. Oh, really? Bill okay, Bill, Bill, Bill Murray. Murray. You know him. Nothing he nothing. was in. Ghostbusters. Ah, bueno. Okay, mm-hmm. okay, okay. Yeah, so we did that trend. It was really, really fun. And it was just such an amazing time, like, oh, I love that. of bonding. And, like, we had the fun. We had the inspiration. We had the food. And, like, we had a hard time choosing where to eat. And then we would just end up somewhere that ended up being amazing all oh, around. I love that. The laughs that we had. Like, I'm talking about, like, deep belly laughs. Oh, I love that. Um, and it was just a great time. Like, we all needed it so much. Our team needed it. And just seeing how God is moving, too, like, in our team. Yeah. Um, it's evident that, like, God is doing something in us individually and just as a team, like, for the kingdom. So, yeah, I love man, that. Man, I needed that reminder of, like my why in mm-hmm. a sense so and it's it a cool. good um i love that you went in detail with your experience because it was domestic like we, we live in yeah. central florida you drove three hours it was and pretty local had, to us honestly yeah, yeah same and state. like you don't have to like go super far to kind of like experience a different type of culture different type of foods different yeah. types you know of an experience because yeah. i know i'm one that like if i'm traveling anywhere my biggest priority when i go them is like what is local to here yes. like if if somebody's yes. visiting what you have what do you tell us like i'll ask like the hotel uh receptionist or something mm-hmm. or like the bus driver like what do you recommend or the uber driver um so i love that you went into details for mm-hmm. anyone that is like um oh i don't know what to do when i travel like you know try new things try yeah. try new foods or like you know but i also like to keep that mindset here like in my yeah. own hometown yeah. it's not really my home hometown but it's my home now yeah, yeah, yeah. because adventure there's adventure everywhere there's yeah. new things everywhere and i feel like someone like me who's such a deep thinker mm-hmm. It's so important that I do stuff like that to balance it out because sometimes I could take life way too seriously. Mm. And if the chief end of man is to know God like and to glorify him and but to enjoy him forever, yeah. gotta enjoy life. You gotta yeah, enjoy and what he God. Provides for you. Exactly. Yeah. And like the world that he made and mm-hmm. the people that he gifted to make certain things. Yeah. And so, yeah. Oh my gosh, I love that. Just made me jolly because <laughs> honestly, when I think of Miami, jolly. <laughs> <laughs> when I think of Miami, sorry, we're like going off on here. Uh-huh. Um, but I didn't enjoy it. I didn't enjoy it. Me neither. It. Last right. time I was in Miami, yeah. I was in the nightclub scene. Yeah, and I wasn't, I mean. I mean, I had fun kind of, but not really. Yeah, like it wasn't my type of like thing that I enjoy doing. Um, I like doing things like that, like uh, adventure out, but not mm. necessarily like clubbing Oof, or anything this is like a that, good but. segue into our topic, but I'll let you get cool, to your favorite yes, thing yes, first. Right. But it's just because I feel like when you were saying that, it's because like the world that you live in is like, your perception of the world, if that right, makes sense, right, you know, right. like we literally have you ever heard? <laughs> um, wait, what song is this from? Is it Kanye? I don't know. Forgive me, but Jesus it's it's like we live Christ. in the same. Oh, it's Ti. I think it's like we live in the same building, but got different views. I don't remember that one. But anyway, so mm-hmm. like it's like we could live in the same place, but yeah. experience it totally differently. Yeah. Like Miami, for example. I went to Miami thinking that oh, it's just about luxury yeah. and plastic and plastic and surgery and just yeah, oh, like money, 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 and all that. Stuff. Yes, it is known for that, and that's what it's known for. But there's also a totally different side of it that's like full with so much other things. Mm-hmm. But if your eyes aren't open to that, if you're not seeking that, if you're not wanting that, you're not gonna see it or experience I it. I agree. And so I experience a whole different world of miami now on this side of christ I love that. with a christian community I like it, it was just so fulfilling like, yeah it makes me excited to go back there and now i have a different lens a different mindset um to try to try it out like yeah you know so i love that that's yeah. what i'm saying i love that you went into yeah. detail mine is, what's your favorite thing mine is not so Wait, like rich what's your favorite thing hey. what's your favorite thing 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 um uh, mine is a little bit like not so like depth Bro, deep it's so cringy <laughs> i'm dead okay sorry it's actually this dupe for a stanley cup and it's been my favorite thing for like the longest now it was actually a gift for my birthday from Brittany. <laughs> and she knows me. she knows me so well because she got it in my favorite color and this is not like so like my favorite color is green but i have three specific favorite greens my number one is forest green it's like that dark em- mm, emerald-ish. Emerald's a little bit bright, but like I love it. I think it's just so beautiful. Mm. Uh, then, then olive green and then sage green. My dog's name is Sage, so you can tell I love it. Um, so this one is like more like in between olive and sage. It's like mm. a nice little mixture, so it's beautiful. And um, 
One of my coworkers, she gave us stickers, and so then. I and I was like, her. she's such a millennial. <laughs> who who marks up their Stanley dupe? Uh, I mean, I was I was like, mm. but it's you, like yeah. it's you staying true to you, and I love that. Yeah, I fully I was support like, that, and I can appreciate it by looking at it. Yeah, but I won't do that to mine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how long I'll keep it. I because, like the minimalism of it. Yeah, um, I try to find like matching ones, um, so it can look somewhat nice. But this is my favorite. It I put it to the test. This is so cute. <laughs> this is kawaii, as we would say in Japan. Uh-huh. Um, I put we, it to the test like to really like see how good of a quality it is. Mm-hmm. So one Sunday when I went to church, because I'm so careful with this because I'm known to forget everything, lose everything. Like this and a, um apple tag that your mom got me has been one of my favorite gifts because I need it. Anyways, so... um. I put it to a test. I went to church once and um, I parked in like dead under the sun. And I was like, let me see. Let me see if it stays cold. I put some ice in it. Um, and I was like, let me see if it stays cold. And I'm like at church for like what? Like four or five hours, give or take. Um, when I came back to the car, it was hot. And I don't put a visor in my car. Mm-hmm. I need to get one. But um, and when I went to go take a sip, it was nice and cold. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, yeah, this is this is a, a yeah. ten out of ten. So this is my favorite thing. We'll I link absolutely it below. love it. Yes, absolutely. If you can't find this exact one, we'll we'll if we can't find this exact one, we'll put one yeah. just like it. I'll also link the Wes Anderson reel that we did so you guys yeah. can watch it. Um, but cool. So let's dive into the topic. Yes, yes. Speaking of different worlds. Mm-hmm. We really want to talk today about how do we live in the world but not be of the world. Right. This is, I think, something that, especially young Christians, like young adults, um, that we struggle with Mm -hmm. because we can go from one side to the other. And like the whole heart of our podcast, the whole heart of life is really finding that middle ground. Like not necessarily balance, but like just a healthy rhythm and flow in the in between two extremes right exactly and so one extreme could be being so worldly that you look like the world and it's like do you even know the lord right it's questionable right and the other side is that you're so either hyper spiritual or hyper theological that you have a disconnect from what living in this world Mm -hmm. actually is like Mm -hmm. um And neither one are healthy, and I don't think neither one of those is where God really wants us to live. Right, right. So, what comes to your mind when we when we say that to be in the world but not of the world? So, so this is definitely something that earlier in my walk it was. Don't get me wrong; like even still to this day, as I'm growing with the Lord and uh, getting to know Him more and what He calls us to. Um, it's still something that I'm like, okay, what does this look like? Right. But it was very, it was like a high question for me in the beginning because it's like, I came from the world in a way. So like, I didn't know the right. walk with Christ. I didn't know what that looked like. So something as simple as back, back, uh, then I was sexually immoral, if I'm being honest. And to me, that was normal because the world said so. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, you're in a relationship, a committed, you know, uh, monogamous Try relationship. Try it before you buy it. Right. And I'm like, that's that's normal. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And the way, and I remember, I remember asking my mom once, and I was like, why is sex before marriage so frowned upon when sex is life? It brings life. There's so much beauty and there's a connection, there's intimacy. Yeah. And uh, my mom couldn't answer that when I asked her that. She was like, yeah, like, I don't know. She was like, I don't know how to answer that. And in the beginning of my my walk, that was something just to say an example mm-hmm. that I didn't understand. Yeah, because I remember the world, you asked me. Yeah. And you were so patient with me, too, <laughs> because I was like, I remember, <laughs> and it was recently after TVC, to the conference yes. that changed my life, um, that I was like, I know. You was like, you get it now. <laughs> you was like, I get it now. Yeah. Like, yeah. it just clicked. Like, you had yeah. the spiritual revelation. Yeah, exactly. Because before that, I was already saved. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was like, I know that God says this, and I believe in my Lord, yes. But I just don't feel like I can make that commitment to him yet. Like, I just don't believe it, you know? And then after TV, But also, if you're comfortable getting a little bit, like, mm-hmm. raw, like, mm-hmm. when you first got saved, you were in a relationship, and you were yeah. active. Yeah. And so oh it's gosh. very hard to separate yourself from 
sin or something yeah. that you know is not good for your yeah. spiritual health yeah. when you're in it. Yeah. And well, I guess I can definitely say a small story mm-hmm. about that because I got saved. Um, I remember giving my life to the Lord like uh, this time last year. It was this oh time. Oh my gosh. What's today's Oh my date? goodness. It's, it's May 13th. It was like May 17th. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. That's insane wow two years but, ago right yeah, yeah. Two years. so when this episode released i believe i'm not sure anyways um uh, so i remember i was in a very toxic relationship and i praise the lord for using that yeah relationship though it was toxic and i feel like god has done a lot in my heart to heal mm-hmm. um he used that relationship to really bring me uh like the final straw for me to yeah. come to christ and so I remember when I did get saved, it was in May, and him and I recently got back together. And I remember, like, you were like, so yeah, mad. you were so upset. I was so, like, was nervous like, to tell you. No. So, so nervous. And so, anywho, then we got back together, whatever, and he wanted to do the same things that was normal to us. Oh, my gosh. Mm-hmm. But my soul was like, and then I started uh, listening to uh, Relationship, Relationship Goals, Goals by Mike Todd. Finally, because I remember I sent it to you originally. Like, you years before listen. that. Yeah. Yeah. And, oh, my gosh. Like, I didn't know I was getting convicted. I didn't know what was happening. But it I just, just didn't knew, feel good to you no, no more. It was like. It was like. You couldn't do it in good I, conscience. No. You couldn't even enjoy it anymore. No, I couldn't. That's how I couldn't. you know when the Holy Spirit <laughs> dwells within your heart. No, because the things real. that you used to love, the things that you used to feel good, the things that used to drive you that were your medication yes. to pain, yes. they just don't do it for you Oh no my more. gosh. And then I can tell, he started to see the difference in me yeah. and he wasn't with it. Like mm-hmm. he would manipulate me into believing whatever he would say and stuff. Yeah. But, um, Oh my gosh. I just remember it. Like it feeling extra wrong. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't understand why it was wrong before that, yeah. but it felt so wrong. Right. Yeah. And then, um, whatever. Then finally the Lord like gave me the courage to f- like full blown yeah. end that relationship. And mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, I just and it's I'm not easy. Thankful. Yeah, it wasn't. It definitely wasn't it's easy. Not easy. But um, that's like just an example of um, I remember something that I grew up thinking it was normal because you know in the yeah. world it, it seems normal. You know, the same question I asked my mom like, why is it so frowned upon when it's intimacy, it's connection, yeah. it brings it breeds life. Like you know what I'm saying, all these good things. But then that's where um something good that got created got yes. perverted exactly by the enemy mm-hmm. and this world is ruled by him mm-hmm. you get me um i'll try to link the scripture that says that uh backs this up but um but yeah so it's like that's just like one one of many examples right. i can think of um early in my walk and now i'm like yeah no i am so serious about that because being in the world before um that way i just i don't want to go back to that right Like, I know what that was. Like, that's why, like, so many people, they were just like, oh, like, when I tell them, no, I'm winning for marriage, they're just like, what? No, they look at, they're like, like, you know, whatever, they don't Mm -hmm. believe me and stuff. And listen, I'm human. It's been hard, duh. But, like, I know. (laughs) (laughs) But, like, it's so. And it's so important to share that side of it, too, because we can look at other Christians who are now married and they waited. I've watched, like, Christian YouTubers who said they didn't even kiss until they got married. And I'm like, Back then, I was like, like a year ago, a year or two ago, I'm like, oh, I want to do that. And then now I'm like, hmm, I don't know if I could do it. That's a little extreme, but I honor them for doing that. Yeah. But sharing the real side of it, it's not like you don't have the desire to. Right. It's that your desire to please God is stronger. And honor him. And honestly, yeah. honor your and relationship. Do way. Yeah. yeah. Because I think about it. This is how I think about it. I've done that before right Right. and oh my gosh the emptiness that came about that but now praise the lord i wholeheartedly believe i'm in a healthy relationship that so much (laughs) not only not only third real moment (laughs) (laughs) not only because i want to honor what god says and i believe his word um i want to honor my relationship yes and i don't want to repeat if i if anything that i can control Mm -hmm. if it's within the power that the lord like blesses me with and shoot i'm going to do whatever it is and that's so good because at the root of that is selflessness and you have to get to a certain point in your proximity to christ Mm -hmm. where your life is not just about you anymore and so really at the heart of lust is the pleasing of oneself and 
being able to walk in purity and save yourself for marriage is not just to protect yourself, but yes, that is a very important thing, but mm-hmm. it's also taking into account that this is God's child as well, and I want to protect their heart. Exactly. I want to protect their spiritual walk. Mm-hmm. I want to protect their future. What if that ends up being not your husband or yeah, not your exactly. wife? And then now it's like, you know, obviously God redeems. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. We're mm-hmm. walking testimonies mm-hmm. of that. Mm-hmm. But if you know better, do better, you know? Yeah. And for you to even care that much about someone else's soul, about someone else's walk with God, you yourself have to be in close proximity with Christ. Yeah. Because I know for me, Five years ago, when I wasn't that close to the Lord and I just was co- just coming out of the world, mm-hmm. I still was like, I was extremely selfish in that sense. Mm-hmm. Like, and I realized this, there was a certain point in my walk where I was like, wow, I need to start praying for other people a little bit more. Mm-hmm. You know, he starts re- re- revealing those things to us that we don't even realize how selfish we are. Yeah. How humans are so selfish, bro. Yeah. Like I can imagine everyone listening right now like, oh, that's not me, that's not me. But I challenge you to really think, yeah. how many times a day do you think about yourself mm-hmm. compared to like how much you think about other people? Yeah. Or, you know, yeah. so it really comes down to your relationship yeah. with the Lord. But I love that you even mentioned that because even God, like God knows that you're going to love yourself. So that mm-hmm. he tells us to love your neighbor like yourself. Exactly. Yeah. You know, like, oh my gosh, like seeing God's hand and even like and how he speaks to us. Yeah. It's like, dang, you really know us. I mm-hmm. mean, you know. So that's so good. So like living in the world, I feel like it becomes a challenge because we know that the things that this world does are not in line with God's will. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So there are definitely certain things that just don't belong in a Christian's life, but we also have to make room for the process because sanctification is a process. Lifelong. We talk about this all the time in Mm -hmm. every single one of our episodes and Mm -hmm. we will never stop talking about it because it's so important Right. because God is after our hearts Mm -hmm. and that's the heart of it. Mm -hmm. He's after our hearts, not our behavior, not our how we look in worship. He's not after how we sound when we pray. He's after like where our heart is really at. Right. And when we look at um just even church, you know, like how we do church in America and stuff and like just the difference between what a a relationship with the like an intimate relationship with the Lord is like compared to Christianity as a culture. Okay. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So really as Christians, we need to be the ones who are creating culture in the world Mm. because the statement that in the world, not of the world, I feel like it's like it's a a dead end or it's not a dead end. It's like a cliffhanger Yeah. because the real full thing should be we are in the world, but not of the world, but we are for the world. Amen. You know, so Mm -hmm. we exist to know God, Mm -hmm. our whole purpose here and to make him known. Mm -hmm. We don't just exist to Mm -hmm. just know God, Uh but we have to know God first before we can make him known to the world. Exactly. And how... Like, how can you do that if yeah. you're not, like, here? Does that make exactly. sense? Exactly. What like, would you be have the to point? Be, yeah. How like, are people going to hear about the gospel? Exactly. How are people going to hear about Jesus if exactly. we're not in the spaces yeah. and the places where people who don't know him or exactly. who aren't living a life surrendered exactly. to him are at? Exactly. And I'm talking to the Christian out there that's, that is saved and has, you know, the veil has been lifted and now you see with your spiritual eyes now that don't be afraid to still go to, like, um, uh, like a work meeting that you're the only believer maybe, or like make friends with someone who is not or even just a job that or, is yeah, a secular anything job. Like that. Yeah. Or... Because God, um, ordained for you to be there. Like it's exactly. not, it's not a mistake that you're mm-hmm. there at all. You know what I mean? Yep. And, and I will boldly say, I don't believe in coincidences. I really do believe that God has his hand on anything, even mm-hmm. if technically like you miss the, miss the mark on what he said or how he guides you. Mm-hmm. He is still in control of that. Absolutely, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I don't believe in coincidences. Um, but don't be scared to have that kind of uh, friendship or be be in that because I know, and we've been there, I know that it's like, oh, like, but cringe because it's like, I know that that's technically not, like, aligned and uh, what God says is okay or, yeah. or things like that. Because then you have people who abuse the grace and mm-hmm. abuse the Christian liberty who be, like, in the club every weekend and be like, oh, but God knows my heart. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm just out here, like, being a light. You know, I'm not really getting drunk. I'm just there. And will God ever, like, can God move through that? Absolutely. Absolutely. 
absolutely. But it's our personal responsibility to really stay true to our convictions because the change happens in the world first by happening in us. And that comes from, like I said, our heart, our relationship with the Lord first. Mm -hmm. And then it, you know, bleeds out into our outward actions and how we show up in the world and those spaces. We do need to have Christian community. Absolutely. For sure. We cannot do this life without that. Yeah. But we should not only have Christian community. We need to be in spaces, making friendships, talking to our family members who don't know the Lord because that's what he called us for. Mm -hmm. Like, especially those of us who feel like we are the generational curse breaker in our Mm -hmm. families. It's Mm -hmm. a hard responsibility Mm -hmm. to carry, but if he's called you to it, he's gracing you for it. You know, he's equipped you for it. Mm -hmm. So you're not relying on your own strength. Right, right, right. Yeah. And like you said, it's, it's a hard thing. Like my heart didn't change overnight from thinking that, you know, uh, being, you know, sexually active with a, a, a partner before Christ, and then now, like even like I like I said, when I got saved and everything, and I st- my heart still didn't change to the to the extent that it has now. It takes relationship with God, continue continue seeking Him, but also community had a lot to do with that. Like right. I honestly, girl, like if I didn't have the community that the Lord blessed me with, um, and you to push me to go out there in community. I don't think my faith would have been where it's at right now. It probably would have took a lot longer because um, iron really does sharpen iron. And you see other people's, like, they're witnessing, you know, helped my faith, Mm helped strengthen my faith, helped, you know, like, uh, ignite a fire in me to, like, oh, okay, that's scripture. Where can I find that? Let me dig into that. Like, you know what I mean? Community definitely helped. Uh, a lot in my walk with him and getting to know him and changing my heart um, a lot. Yeah, I think it's a hard thing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put it simple. Like, it's hard to be a Christian. Like, (laughs) it's not easy. (laughs) The thing, I always say this, it's not easy, but it is simple. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? So, like, it's simple because God is not a God of confusion. He gives us direction. He gives us his word to be a lamp unto our feet, to mm-hmm. guide us, mm-hmm. to show us right from wrong, to give us wisdom. He puts people in our life, uh, the local church, to guide us and stuff. That doesn't mean that it's easy to live right. out because at the end of the day, what being a Christian really is, is living with a mirror in front of your face every single day. Mm. And when we let fear keep us captive and we don't step out into like serving or stepping into our purpose because we're scared or we don't feel like we're ready. That's, um, that leads us to not living in the fullness of what he has for us. Because like I said, we don't, we don't have this gift of grace for us to keep and hold on to. It's for us to show and be Jesus to the human extent that we can be Jesus in this world to people who don't know him. Like, what does he say? Uh, uh, a city built on a hill cannot dim its light. I forget the scripture. Mm. I'm going to put it here. Mm-hmm. But, like, we weren't meant... He didn't shine his light on us for us to, like, put it in, hide it. Right. It's for us to shine on the world. Right. And I think it's so important with culture that we are not being influenced by culture, but that we are influencing culture. Yeah, that's so because good. Because in the book Essentialism, mm-hmm. one, of the, one of the first chapters, it says, and I live by this... Because I heard it um, from one of my friends, Alex at Vu Church. He's mm-hmm. also the de- graphic designer there. Um, that culture either happens by default or by design. Oh, girl, And yes. so either you're intentional with the choices you make to create that culture or it's going to happen by default. And the default of this culture, of this world, is that it's dark. Yeah. You're either advancing the kingdom of darkness yeah. or you're advancing the kingdom of heaven. Exactly. And there is no in-between. Mm-hmm. That's why, like, Scripture says, for those who are lukewarm, he's going to spit out. Mm-hmm. Because this is not the time to be lukewarm. Mm-hmm. Like, you can't be one foot in, one foot out. And this is with respect to process. Yeah. Not saying you need Absolutely. to be perfect you need to never sin because that's unrealistic we're always going to sin as far as we're on this side of eternity but your focus every day should be turning your face to jesus you should be repenting daily for Mm -hmm. sins known and unknown to you because that is what puts your right your heart back in the right standing with him in your subconscious you know what i mean so that's so important and then not like Compare, comparing yourself to other people's walks. That's Whether so Whether it's people powerful. in the world or people in the church. Yes, yes. Because it's so know. easy. Yeah, and it's so easy to compare um, your walk with somebody else's yes. walk and how their sanctification looks exactly. and even the rate that it went, the pace that it went compared to yours. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's like, where conviction comes in because conviction is so 
personal. I may have a strong yeah. conviction about the way I dress, mm -hmm. but you may not mm -hmm. because maybe the way you dress doesn't have a hold on you like it does for me. Yeah. That's just an example. Mm -hmm. But like, for example, with me, before I got saved, I was a pothead. Mm -hmm. Like, and I loved the party scene. Like, mm -hmm. but even then I wasn't like a crazy party girl. Like I never like sniffed Coke and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like everyone around me did. Mm -hmm. But like, I was kind of like a safe party girl, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But I still loved, I loved the rush. I loved the attention. And then it come, came to a point where I had an encounter with the Lord. And all of a sudden I felt like wrong. And mm -hmm. I just saw the darkness around mm -hmm. me and like, it just didn't sit right in my spirit. And so I was like, oh. I need to get out of this. But the yeah. thing is, I didn't focus on, God, I need to stop smoking. God, yeah. I need to stop doing this. Because when you focus on trying to stop the thing, mm -hmm. you're really trying to do it out of your own strength. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of living life with Christ is he sends his spirit to dwell within us and he empowers us yep. to overcome things. And if there is a sin that you still struggle with and you're like, why do I keep falling back to this? Stop focusing on that sin and focus on your savior. Yeah. You know, focus on him. Yeah. The more you focus on him, the impurities start to just break off and wash away. And it's just a natural effect of that. Yeah. Yeah. And so I really want to harp on the fact that don't let comparison compromise your calling or your conviction Ooh. because like those come hand in hand. So mm -hmm. like, I feel like in order for you to really walk in your calling, you have to know what your convictions are. Right. You have to know, cause as you can, you're convicted about things, you learn what you tend to idolize. Cause that's what conviction is. Conviction really reveals to you something that you've been putting in the place of God, mm. that you love something a little bit too much. Mm -hmm. Like you love this more than you love God. Mm -hmm. And and honestly, the closer that you get to Christ, the stronger that that gets. Mm -hmm. you're, you start noticing things that are so deep, it can only be God revealing it. Because yeah. you're like, to the human eye, this doesn't look like sin. Yeah. But if it's not done in good faith, if it's done in a way that you're looking to that thing for something that only God can mm -hmm. fulfill in you or mm -hmm. uh, heal in you or whatever, that is sin. Yeah. That's idolatry. And he is a jealous God because we are rightfully his and right. he doesn't. And it's not even like to picture him as a wrathful God, but it's like, God is good. Life with God is amazing. Mm -hmm. Like Jackie Hill Perry put out a video that was such a good video recently. I forgot the name of the show. Um, of the we'll show. link it. Mm -hmm. But she talked about stop looking to your idols mm -hmm. to soften your suffering. Mm -hmm. And that oh, okay, is okay. the season that I am in. Yo, I've been telling you this <laughs> yeah. for months, bro. Like, yeah. Even me a year ago, mm -hmm. I was in a really tough season. I mean, a year ago, I was kind of in a similar place where I didn't have those idols as well. But even still, like, the Lord has been pruning me so much. And I'm just like, I be wrestling with him every day. The mm -hmm. fact that he told me to give up my Instagram, which I grew to 10K over 10 years, bro. Yeah. Like, I put in blood, sweat, <laughs> and tears. Right. But he was like, no, you love this too much. Like, mm -hmm. you need to give it up. Mm -hmm. And I'm still, every day, I'm like, Oh, yeah. I was using it for good. I was yeah. using it as a ministry. I can't tell you how many lives were changed by me being showing up there yeah. and giving my wisdom yeah. and what he was showing me. Yeah. But he will take those out of our lives. Yeah. So just real quick, I want to finish mm -hmm. this thought. Mm -hmm. And then um, so this season, it's like I'm in a very difficult season. Yeah. Like it's been very hard emotionally. It's been very hard spiritually. Um I'm stepping up in ministry a lot more. And with every single level literally comes new devils, bro. Yeah. Like I feel the mm. spiritual warfare and I have she gotten got to a place. Today. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even realize. Um, I got to a place in my walk where I don't want to over like hyper spiritualize everything. Right. But I'm, I'm very careful to not overlook the spiritual side of things because things are always more spiritual than they seem. Yeah. And I look back and I look at patterns and I also realize that this is a gift that God has given me with discernment to yeah. notice patterns yeah. and to see things with those kind of eyes. And I'm like, that's so real. But even in this season where normally I would run to things that are seemingly they look like safe. Uh, harmless, yeah. Like watching a show on Netflix that mm -hmm. brings me comfort. Mm. And this is where I'm telling you, this is why you have to stay rooted in the Lord because there's also an unhealthy side of that yeah. that can lead to legalism yeah. of you being hypercritical I, of yourself, yes. hyper-religious, like I can't do this, mind. I can't do that. Yeah. Um, excuse me, and I have struggled with that as well mm -hmm. because I'm like so hard on myself, mm -hmm. right? But something as simple as like, I'm having a rough day, emotionally hard day, and I just want relief from the pain. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, let, let me just watch a, a happy show on Netflix. Mm -hmm. But it's like, I literally feel a blockage telling me like, no, you can't do that. Mm. And it's, 
at this point, I realized like it was God this whole time telling me like, no, don't run to anything else. And I'm not even the one to binge watch Netflix. I would barely watch TV for the yeah. past few years. But yeah. And then I'm like, okay, maybe I'll just go get my favorite ice cream or my boba mm-hmm. or all these things. And God is convicting me like, no, this season, you need to sit in that pain. You need to sit mm-hmm. and let it sting so that mm-hmm. you learn from this and you are refined from this. Because mm-hmm. if you keep trying to soften it, mm-hmm. you're not going to get the extent of the mm-hmm. purification that I'm trying to give you for what I have for you, like next for you. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, yeah. really, God? Like, naturally, how much longer I can't take yeah, this? Yeah, <laughs> because naturally we don't, and you told me this, like just in our personal conversation, like naturally when we are being corrected, even if it's in a loving way, yeah. it feels Oh, it feels icky. It feels horrible. Like you want to rebel against it. You know, it doesn't feel yeah. good to us. And as humans, you know, instant gratification is our like um, our motivation a lot of the time. You know, we want something quick, fast, and satisfying right here, right now. Right. That a lot of us um, naturally, we just like we want to avoid that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But what you're avoiding is causing more harm to you. You get what I'm saying? Like, and it's. Like, even if we have a young audience out there, like, if we if we do, like, a teenager and stuff, like, our oh, parents, yeah. like, mm-hmm. our parents, they, they've they been there, done that, they live that, right? Um, you can always look at, at God. I mean, hey, he is our heavenly father. Yeah. That when they are correcting you, and, and I pray that it is in a loving way, when they are correcting you, they're not doing that to, like, uh, be, like, uh, boring parents or, like, you know, like, misunderstanding parents or anything like that. No, they're doing that because they know that you need to kind of go through this, like, uh, uh, boohoo moment like mm-hmm. uh like this this rough moment yeah. because there is and god tells us there is endurance there is perseverance in our trials in like the hardships that there is a sense of growth in that that if you don't go through that you're just prolonging yeah you know prolonging the suffering you're you're like when the hit comes it's going to hit so much harder that if you yeah um if you just like kind of like listened and and be like okay lord like this sucks because parents have a viewpoint that a 17 year old doesn't have right so um like it makes me super grateful on how we grew up thinking about like the suffering and the struggles because yeah we didn't have the most like sheltered life or you know like we 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 got through some hard stuff but um when i went off to the military and there was a lot of things that i didn't know and it was rough Mm -hmm. but i still to this day will tell you that i if i had to do it all over again i would because the way that i grew up the way that the uh, that the military challenged me and it was it was it was hard it was through discipline it was through yeah like discipline yeah and and like it taught me the lord disciplines those he loves yeah so we take that this is why I've been loving the book of Hebrews in this season. Mm. Cause it's, it's all about like, um, when life doesn't look like what you thought it would, Mm -hmm. you know? And it says that like he chastises his children and his discipline is always, it always leads to good things. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So it's like, um, don't be afraid of, or don't try to run away from, suffering sometimes or like or like the thick of not getting your way because at the end of the day you always have to take it back to the root of things and what is the purpose of your life Mm your the purpose of your life is to know god make him known to glorify him in everything you do so if you're going through a tough season but it's bringing you closer to him boom Mm -hmm. the Mm -hmm. goal is being accomplished Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and if something is drawing you anything away from him, that's not the kingdom. That is not the Holy Spirit that's guiding you. Yeah. So we really got to like sit down and reflect like, yeah. is what I'm doing, is the fruit of what I'm doing, the fruit of what I'm a, what I'm believing, is it drawing me closer to God right. or is it drawing me closer to anything else? Right. Like we said, there is no in between. Right. It's either drawing you closer to God and advancing the kingdom of heaven mm-hmm. or drawing you closer to anything else and advancing the kingdom of darkness you know the the image i just had in my mind as you were speaking um in regards to being in the world but not of the world it reminds me of like swimming against the current you're swimming against the current of this world you know and it's hard you have to push harder but you're swimming right against it but once you get to the end right not only are you stronger because it took the muscle yeah i feel like i see it a different way really so you know when you're caught and they give you like the diagram training like if you're caught in a riptide or whatever okay never try to swim against the current swim perpendicular to it Mm. so like if here's the shoreline and the current is going like pulling you out this way swim parallel to the shoreline oh i never so it's like 
I feel like as Christians being in the world but not of the world is us like we still we're not fighting against culture mm. like but we have to learn how to maneuver it in a way that's to good. like get out of it or like yeah. be different you know mm -hmm, what I mean mm -hmm. so that's good I when you say you you're grateful for our upbringing mm -hmm. one reason I'm grateful for our upbringing the fact that we didn't grow up like heavily in the church mm -hmm. we both have like a somewhat like basic background in Catholicism like yeah. most people from New York yeah um but we did not grow up going to church a lot. And I'm grateful for that so much because we had such a good dose of what the world has to offer. Mm -hmm. Like I tried everything mm -hmm. that this world has to offer mm -hmm. besides some things, you know, but like as much as one person can try in a matter of 29 years, I've tried the jumping from relationship to relationship, the shacking up with my boyfriend, the sex before marriage, the nightlife, coming home at 5, 6 a.m., the getting drunk all the time, the partying in college, mm -hmm. the the even the seemingly good things. Like I've tried the content creation thing. I've tried the being Instagram famous, the having the clout, the networking and being cool with everyone and trying to make it to a million and the laptop lifestyle and the quitting my job and moving to a foreign country mm. to be a content creator to being in the hottest nightclubs in the hottest cities in the world like Miami mm -hmm. I was in Soho Beach Club if you don't know what that is <laughs> point point <laughs> proven like yeah. it's the most exclusive place that you can be um or like literally partying with celebrities yeah. and like I saw the reality of that that's why I'm so big on not comparing myself anymore yeah. because the thing that you're comparing yourself to is only presenting itself a certain way and I promise you that those influencers that those celebrities that those Christians that you're comparing yourself to are like you're just judging you're basing your reality off of their highlight reel or what right. they show to the world right it's never greener on the other side the grass is never greener on the other side mm -hmm. it's always greener where you water it mm -hmm. and i'm just so grateful that i tried all those things out because i literally got to the point where i was like god i don't want this world i just want you that's mm -hmm. why i love the song give me jesus so yeah. much because like uh, I don't want, like, you can have this world, yeah. I just want Jesus. Yeah. Like, legitimately, because at the end of the day, you cannot take any of this with you. Mm -hmm. Like, scripture says, the, the grass withers and mm -hmm. the flowers fade, mm -hmm. but the word of our God lasts forever. And what does that mean? Now he's not, not just the Bible, mm -hmm. the word of God, but if Jesus is the word made flesh, he lasts forever. He's eternal. When we die, we can't take our house with us. Mm -hmm. We can't take our financial mm -hmm, status with us we mm -hmm. can't take our followers our label with us even in ministry we can't mm -hmm. like the things we do matter yes and they you know the amount of gems on our crown and mm -hmm. and our, our, our how big our room is in the mansion like all those stuff are cool but yeah i'm glad if i just get through the gates yeah. you know what i'm saying like <laughs> like just yeah. let me in jesus yeah, like yeah. i just want to be in your presence that is the ultimate prize mm -hmm. and when you have you ever been to like a wake yes so mm -hmm. you see someone there, like, it's just so perspective shifting because you just see this person there in their body, but you know that their soul is not yeah. there. And it's so heartbreaking. Yeah. I hate funerals and wakes for that reason. Like, yeah, because it mm -hmm. just doesn't even feel like that person's really even yeah. there. Yeah. Because they can't take nothing with them. You can't even like your own children mm -hmm. still get left behind mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because at the end of the day they're his mm -hmm. we are just giving them to steward mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. we're given in this world mm -hmm. is by his grace for us to steward yeah. and to live to yeah. bring unto him and mm -hmm. to bring his glory and yeah. like shine it yeah and you know it's like this full circle thing yeah and i feel like that's the perspective we need to have in this world yeah. so we don't get lost in the sauce yeah i agree and i think um you make a good point too and then it ties into our topic because um, God does give us grace and, and uh, opportunity to cultivate uh, a life here, right? And, of course, our number one priority is to make him known and to honor him and to glorify him. Yeah. But also, like, to have in mind that you want to leave a legacy in the sense of, like, like what, what did I do? What are you doing that matters for yes, eternity? exactly, exactly. Kingdom work, you know, mm -hmm. like, like when I kind of like, you can look at Jesus, like he, his ministry was for three years. I mean, hey, it's Jesus, <laughs> but his ministry was for three years, right? But he, we are still talking about him. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. his legacy is still alive. He, his spirit is alive. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, um, 
It reminds me of like, um, I hear it all the time that people don't remember what you did for them. They remember how you made them feel. So it's like, yes, we don't take any of that with us to eternity. And amen, there is a relief in that. But also like, remember that what you do matters, like you said, um, how you make people feel like um, we are- It's the spiritual side of things. Like what are you doing- that is affecting the spiritual right. world. That is right. affecting the spirit right. of people. How right. are you influencing that? Right, side exactly, of exactly. And we are to conform in his. We already made in his image, but we are to conform to his character. Yeah. You know, it, his spirit does dwell within us. And each and every single day, um, I know it's a big prayer point of mine to um, help me show you to somebody else. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And um, that's like a, a perfect example of. Oh, darn, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> I feel like, so I got a thought while you said yeah. that. So thank you, Holy Spirit. Because <laughs> you do this so well. Oh. And I think that this, I definitely know that God has given you that gift of one, mercy, because mm. you just have a way of like showing compassion to people and making them feel safe. Mm. But also, you just evangelize so well without going on the streets and preaching the gospel mm. and without being like, you're going to be yeah. sent Repent to hell. right now. Yeah, like yeah. <laughs> the best form of ministry is how we live our yeah. lives. Yeah. And so that is how we live in this world but not be of the world is that our life, it has to look different than those people who don't, who aren't living for the Lord because it's just a natural byproduct of loving Jesus. If you love Jesus, if you've tasted <laughs> how good he is. Yeah. It's impossible that your taste buds aren't going to change. Mm-hmm. Like, you, ha- they have to. Mm-hmm. Because when you've tasted what's purely good, the knockoff stuff just don't do it anymore. And that's like the sum of yeah. what we were just saying. Yeah. So it's like, when you think about the, the Lord's Prayer, you know, on earth as it is in heaven. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on mm-hmm. earth as it is in heaven. Mm-hmm. We know that we have a world that's going to be purely good. No pain, no sickness, no disease mm-hmm. in heaven. Mm-hmm. But... We can we have get, a piece of that here. We get a piece of that here, mm-hmm. and we are called to be that piece for people, right. but it first starts within us right. by seeking first the kingdom, by seeking that out from God. Like, no matter what we're going through, yeah. realizing that we have access yeah. by his spirit yep. to the fruits of his spirit, mm-hmm. which are peace being right. one of them, joy, kindness, love, self-control. kindness, mm-hmm. patience, uh, humility. Mm-hmm. So those things should be something that we are trying to just cultivate right. more and more of and right. not in our own strength, but right. with in partnership right. with him. Right. Um, so practically what living in the world, but not being of the world looks like is living your life in a way that looks different, but realizing that your actions, the decisions that you make, and also looking for opportunities to share that with people, whether that's just in your personal relationships mm-hmm. or if you do use your social media as a platform, mm-hmm. sharing the behind the scenes, your thought process, your prayer time revelations that God is giving you the green light to share that shows how it actually plays out mm-hmm. of what living a life with mm-hmm. the Lord looks like. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like the misconception comes in when we start believing and I'm talking about this is like a deeply seated belief mm-hmm. that makes us that makes the things of the world tempting. But it's the belief that the things of the world are better than what God has to offer. Mm-hmm. Because it's like, oh, well, I can't do this, can't do that. No, but what you get from a life yielded to the Lord is so much more fruitful, yeah. so much more life giving yeah. than anything this yeah. world has to offer. Yeah, it's actual freedom. Exactly. You know, I, I feel like the misconception that is the difference because yeah. the things of the world keep you coming back. Yes, exactly. You smoke weed, okay, your high comes down. Now yeah. you can just spark yeah. another blunt. Or if it doesn't hit you the same way, you go for another thing. Exactly. That's, that's... And then and then you start to mm-hmm. grow like uh, what is the word? Um, dependent. Dependent on mm-hmm. it, and like just what is that word? Mm, when does it hungry? affect you anymore oh uh plateau or no immune no it's not immune oh, it's dang. like so many words <laughs> it's like a specific word like you're dang, brain fart i gotta think of this word now uh comment down below if you can think for you uh <laughs> uh dang. let's see not think for it think of the word i'm immune to it you're a bit basically you grow immune to it okay Better. It's, no, mm. like you just become like immune to it. So it doesn't have the effect on you anymore right. that used to. So now you go to something stronger. Yep. And that's why I say that they say, always say that weed is a gateway drug mm. because yeah, it's a gateway drug to another drug, but also it's a desensitized mm. as well. It's a gateway in the spiritual world as well. Heck yeah. Because you're, you're allowing yourself. Oh, don't even get me started, bro. Like 
Ooh, what I know like after I got saved, I still smoked weed a few times after that. And I'm telling you, the paranoia, I didn't even know I was saved. I didn't know what being saved was. Right. I just knew I had an encounter with God that yeah. was very supernatural. Yeah. And I'm telling you, I woke up the next day and I was different. Yeah. Like, and I didn't have the desire to smoke anymore, but I was still around friends who were still smoking. And this is, this, this is preaching, so listen. Mm-hmm. And I smoked one time, and we were in my living room back in, in New York. Mm-hmm. And, and I get like hesitant to even share it, and I'm laughing because it's just so crazy. <laughs> I literally felt like I was possessed. And like looking mm. back on it, I um, honestly probably was. Like I heard voices in my head. I heard like movements and like it was just weird. Like I mm. felt like I didn't even, like I was having an outer body experience mm. and I couldn't even like have full control over my body. It was crazy, bro. Mm. I never touched weed again for so long. I think I smoked it one time after that when I was in Thailand. Mm-hmm. Like I took one hit and I was like, I'm good. Yeah. And... It's so real because if you're not like, again, if you're not advancing the kingdom of heaven, what spirit is really yeah. leading you? Yeah. Because what is the fruit of what you're doing? Yeah. If it's drawing you away from God, it's Satan is using you as a pawn, whether you realize it or not. And mm-hmm. we really got to sit back and be like, whoa, take mm-hmm. a heart check, take a pulse check. Like, what is going on here? What am I being led by? Right. What is the root that is leading me to do this? And what is coming from this? Mm-hmm. No, that's so good. I definitely, like I was uh, saying how... Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you No, off. no, you're fine, you're <laughs> fine. But I definitely want to finish that mm-hmm. thought because um, many people can see God as like, you know, um, you can't do this, you can't, yeah. oh, Christianity, like, like you can't. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. like, like someone, um, if they hear me listen to JoJo, like Jojo was my girl when I was uh growing Get up. Get out right, right now. now. <laughs> it's the end of you. And yeah, me. and it's like, oh, you listen to you listen to like regular music, um, you know, like cause cause they're thinking, oh, but you're a Christian, mm. you know what I'm saying? But that's just like a very simple example of God, kind of like the whole back to the whole parent thing, like his boundaries, like his his way of doing things. Yeah actually gives you freedom because it gives you freedom. freedom. Yeah. Like peaceful freedom. Like, um, because if you keep doing it, like, like keep seeking that, that drug, that high Mm -hmm. and a drug can be money. A drug can be attention. It doesn't have to be like an actual substance. A drug can look like ministry. Yeah. Or ministry. Exactly. Um, God places those boundaries and boundaries are so vital because you'd be surprised how much they, how much freedom actually comes with that. Having boundaries. Yeah. Having, Absolutely. having boundaries because like That's a, whole a lot, yeah, like a lot of people think like, oh, like I don't, you know, like free, free will, like no order. You know what I mean? I don't want to have at the restrictions. End of the day, we're all sheep. And this is something I always think back when I was in the new age Yeah, and chime in whenever you want to like drive that point home. Mm-hmm. But I feel like this is something was so revolutionary when I realized it because the new age movement is all about being free spirited. Yeah. It's all about, you know, living your truth and living mm-hmm. your life and just uh, pursuing positivity, yeah. blah, 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 mm-hmm. which the heart of it is good. And mm-hmm. it's people who are hurting. We're all hurting. And right. We all just want to live a pain free life. Right. But that's the thing is like when we start thinking that we can have heaven on earth, like full heaven, mm-hmm. We can. That's mm-hmm. where uh, prosperity gospel comes in. It's mm-hmm. dangerous because it teaches that life with Christ is going to be you financially yeah, you're well. Just gonna be you're going like to be healthy all 100% the time. Okay. And that's not true. Scripture very much <laughs> promises us that we're going to face trials. Yep. We're going to face yep. uh, suffering. Yep. But what comes from that is the goal is being accomplished of being closer to the Lord and glorifying him. Mm-hmm. But back to that is we're all sheep. Mm-hmm. every single one of us mm-hmm. and how we know that is because we didn't have a say in how we were created right what we look like who our parents were what our culture is where we live mm-hmm. that shows that there was someone bigger than us that created us yep. and gave us order exactly the mm-hmm. thing is who is your shepherd mm, who is that's leading so good. you mm. so the thing about the difference between being a christian and not is mm-hmm. that we have our she- a shepherd and he we says know him. my sheep know me they mm-hmm. they know my voice mm-hmm. so that there's true freedom in that because we're being led to the right, right. things that actually give us right. life that actually care for us there's this whole soft girl movement that's mm-hmm. on going on right now where it's like i just want to live a soft life that's full of peace and surrounded by peace and all this stuff but it's like yes like the root of that and the heart of that is good, but mm-hmm. you can't really experience those yeah. things without yeah. knowing your creator mm-hmm. and yeah. living in 
a close relationship yeah. with him. Yeah, and there's a time for everything. Like, mm-hmm. I know a lot of times, like, some people can think, like, oh, Christianity looks like, you know, oh, like, this kind of, like, kumbaya, like, kind of, like, moment or lifestyle, yeah. you know what I mean? But there's a time for everything. There is a time for peace, but there's a time for war. There's a time, mm, you know, that's good. Th- yeah, there's a time for battle. There's a yeah. time for peacemaking. There is a time for everything. And I remember very recently, I was going through a really hard season, and I was, like, I was trying to kind of, like, run away from that because mm-hmm. to a certain to a certain extent it was a little bit peaceful for me in, in that area it was a little bit peaceful it was going great like yeah. but then you know it stopped and i was like and that scripture spoke to me like crazy because it's like okay that that season of peace within mm-hmm. this area ceased now it's time for it's time for battle it's time yeah. for for you know like some guerrera moment mm-hmm. <laughs> you know yeah. and i feel like I feel like it's very um, important to bring light to that, that yes, of course, of course, we want to live a peaceful life and amen to that. And Jesus is our Prince of Peace, so we will always find peace in him. Right. But read the Gospels. You'll see how mm-hmm. like a firm and um, like, ay, what's the word I'm looking for? Now I'm going through a brain fart with words. Um You'll see when he has to lay down the law in a sense. Oh, yeah. You know absolutely. what I'm saying? Like, he is very gentle. He is very loving. But you'll see when he has to as but he well. Not, he doesn't compromise truth. And right. That's what, like, exactly. We're all about grace and truth. Right. Exactly. Which we'll do a podcast episode on yes. that soon. Yes. But I love how you explained, like, the music example. Because the way I... Oh. What I took <laughs> from you sharing that uh-huh. was back to the main point of conviction. Yeah. So, Christian liberty is a beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. But there's like a process in that. And I feel like when we, when you really surrender to the Lord, like it's one thing to profess and believe that Jesus is your savior yeah. and a totally another thing to really make him the Lord of your life where you really surrender, throw up your hands yeah. as a, like, and I'm talking metaphorically, yeah. throw up your hands. Like, yeah. God, I do not want to do life my own way anymore. Like, take it all. Have me. Yeah. Like, I am yours fully and completely. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's not a one-time thing. That's Mm -hmm. an everyday thing thing as life progresses, as as Mm -hmm. seasons change. Mm -hmm. You have to continuously surrender. Mm -hmm. And it comes back to conviction. So, like, when you first surrender to the Lord, I believe that there is, like, a separation that happens where... It's crazy and it's heavy. And I think that's the heart of where this question comes from, from a lot of people who have asked us this. It's like, how do you live in the world but not of the world? Mm -hmm. Because they know, they have a hyper awareness now of the things that are wrong. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we can like hyper spiritualize everything. Mm -hmm. I used to literally not say like, I'm dead because I felt like Mm -hmm. it was speaking death over my life. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there's some spiritual truth to that. But it was also like, I was being hyper spiritual about that. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, all right, whatever. It's not Mm -hmm. that deep. Mm -hmm. Um, But for some people, it might be that deep at the certain point that they're at with the Lord. And that's where, for me, where I'm at now in ministry, I'm in creative ministry. And I never thought I would be doing creative things in ministry because I always felt called to communicate. And... So that's super cool that he redeemed my gifts in that way because I wasn't using my creativity necessarily to do dark things, but it was an idol. Like it was something that I looked to to soften the suffering all the time. All I had to do was just get cute and post a selfie and now I got a bunch of likes or DMs or even, even something as good as... I'm going through a really rough time. Let me talk about it on my Instagram so that people know they're not alone. That's a good thing. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, I started doing that so much that it was softening my my suffering Mm -hmm. to the point where I wasn't getting the full extent Mm -hmm. of what he was trying to teach me. Gotcha. But anyways, to bring it back to my original point on this Mm -hmm. was you said that a coworker would hear you listening to a secular song and Mm -hmm. she'd be like, oh, like, you You listen listen to that? that? (laughs) And so the beauty in that is... You can listen to it. Listening Mm -hmm. to secular music is not a sin. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, it just don't hit the same no more. And not all of it. Right. But there's certain songs or certain music that you listen to or certain things you used to do that just does not hit the same. Yeah. It doesn't do for you what it Mm -hmm. used to Mm -hmm. because you realize that only the Lord can do that thing for you now. Yeah. And you're you're not the same person. Mm -hmm. You know, um, he... You're a new creation in him. Yeah. You know, so your desires are different. Yeah. And music was definitely one of the ways that I saw that, like, practically. Yeah. I remember, (laughs) I remember, um, 
that on my way to work, uh, recently saved, like just freshly saved, I would be like, okay, um, cause I was uh, like doing a routine. Um, I would listen to a sermon early in the morning and I would listen to worship music on my way to work. Mm -hmm. But I remember, uh, setting a time of 30 minutes, first thing listening, cause I wanted to start my day with God. Yeah. And so I would listen to worship music for 30 minutes, but I remember being like, okay, I got five more minutes. Okay. I got 10 more minutes and I can go back to like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. bad bunny. I can go back to like, you know, like whatever music I was, I would listen to and stuff or whatever. But now that's a good example of like the doing Life with God is a checklist. Yeah. That's a great yeah. example of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But now, and granted, like, I still like some, you know, secular music and stuff like that, but I am a lot more mindful yeah. on um, what they say and then, like, my own convictions, like, oh, that doesn't sit right with me. Right. So, you know, you know it, I just want to listen to it. Um, but now it's like my go-to is just listening to things that feed my soul. Yeah. You know, and it can be it can be worship music and having a worship session in my car. Or it can be just Christian um, expression, just mm -hmm. Christian uh, uh yeah, music. Like, yeah, like you know what I mean. Yeah, exactly. Something mm -hmm. that's not like deliberately glorifying sin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. So um, that's where the full circle moment comes in too, because God may take something out of your life or convict you about something for a certain time because that thing was an idol or it was yeah. blocking your relationship with Him. Yeah. And then there may be a time when you don't feel like convicted about it anymore, and it's right. because it's not a hindrance. It's not stumbling you mm -hmm. in your relationship with Him. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm kind of experiencing that a little bit now with music, like. I legitimately only listened to worship music for two years straight, bro. Mm. Like, I would listen to a little bit of secular music. I'm talking about, like, maybe a song every few months. Mm -hmm. And not out of, like, I felt like I had to. Like, I literally just did not have the desire. Right. I would put it on. I'd just be like, mm, nah, I'm good. Yeah. Like, it just was not giving me what I needed. Mm -hmm. And now I'm slowly, like, listening to secular music a little mm -hmm. bit more. But, like... Mm -hmm my old school R&B yes. and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. it's like, I'm enjoying it, like purely enjoying right. it. And like it's actually drawing me closer to God, yes. actually, because I'm like, wow, reminiscing on my yes. life and how much he brought me through yes. and stuff. So and that's a perfect, conviction. that's a perfect example of the freedom in the Lord yeah. because he already did a work in you mm -hmm. and you were obedient yeah. to him, you know, and that now you have the liberty yeah. to listen to something like that. Yeah, you're still mindful and you're still um, mm -hmm. obedient to your convictions, but you're you're, you have that liberty to enjoy it yeah. and enjoy it in a way that is not dishonorable. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So I love that. Yeah. And I, I really do hope that this encourages anyone out there, really blesses um, yeah. everyone out there because I know it's definitely like a hot topic. Um, and we can go we can go many different ways of this and, and explaining and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So um, At the end of it all, the, the moral of how to live in the world, not of the world, is being a christian is hard yeah literally scriptures jesus tells us if anyone wants to follow me he must pick up his cross yep you know and like deny yourself pick up your cross and follow me mm -hmm. so you first have to deny yourself your fleshly desires pick up your cross like choose jesus yeah. and do the hard things and the way you live your life because we are called to the world to go out to do the great commission to make disciples of all nations to share the good news of what he's done in our lives yeah. and what he did 2000 years ago. But the best way we do that is by how we live our lives and living in this world. It requires you to really make sure that you are picking up your cross. Yep. Otherwise you're going to look like the rest of the world and that's not the goal either. Mm -hmm. And if you really do have a relationship with God, you're not going to feel good doing that. Yeah. So you might as well just do the hard work because the reward for that is whoo. Mm -hmm. So powerful. Yeah. I saw this uh, picture and I feel like I've been living by this for so long. And it was a great reminder that you do the hard things now, you have an easier yes. life later. You do the easy things now, you have a harder life later. Mm -hmm. So that That's can be word. applied in so many aspects of your life, especially, you know, um, in your Christian walk. Because mm -hmm. it is hard. It is very, <laughs> it's very hard, but it's definitely very rewarding. It's very fulfilling. Yeah. Um, because when you do see um, at the end of uh, the assignment, the mission or whatever you be like you look back and you're like oh like yeah. you know that it wasn't in vain it's like i'd rather wow. have a hard life filled with purpose and fulfillment than an easy life that's filled with emptiness say for the know? people in the back girl <laughs> <laughs> for real yeah no i agree 100 percent. yeah but thank you guys for listening i'll pray yes god we thank you so much lord that you 
cared enough about us in this broken world to send your son god to be our gateway to you to have a right relationship with you again where we can not only look forward to eternity in your presence that is full of just no pain and no sickness no disease no tears no hurt but just full with nothing but good things. And we're so grateful that you give us a taste of that here on earth through your spirit, God. I pray that every single person listening to this message right now, God, that they would really just receive what you have for them, God, that you would lovingly convict them of the things that they are putting in in the place that you so rightfully deserve, Lord, that they would um, just take up their cross, deny themselves and follow you day in and day out, Lord, that they would seek you so much, invite you into every aspect of their heart aspect of their lives where you would start revealing things to them that they would have not been able to realize uh prior to that lord i pray that you would just protect them as they go into their workspaces and the spaces that are not necessarily christian lord and that you would just give them a a boldness that is both graceful and truthful god to live a life that looks different than the world that people look at them and say oh what's different about this person like you know they have a joy unexplainable they have a peace in the midst of the pain and just the chaos god and i pray that they would just uh realize that they have full access to that and that they would start wanting to desire uh, more of the fullness of life in you god that they would stop um settling for a mediocre lukewarm life lord and that they would just pursue you so passionately god that you would just fuel them and and just make their purpose more clear to them lord we thank you and we love you in your holy name we pray amen amen that's That's a wrap. wrap don't forget to hit that bell notification subscribe to our channel and leave us a review because <laughs> it's super helpful um, not only for us to know what um, you guys uh, want to hear uh, what is beneficial for you guys but you know we're a growing ministry here we're mm-hmm. growing a uh, family so yes. um, all of that definitely helps support us to give back and it's to free you guys and it's free. and if any of you do want to ever gift us uh, monetarily to help us with our equipment mm-hmm. investing in a studio space yeah. so that recording could be a lot easier <laughs> um Feel free to do so uh, through the Cash App link in our description. By no means feel obligated, obligated to do that. Yeah. But if the Lord does put that on your heart and that you feel called to give in that way, we would appreciate that more than you can imagine. Yes, absolutely. Um, and pray that the Lord will multiply it uh, back to you. But yeah, absolutely. But and the best way you can support us is by sharing this with yes. three people who this can bless because we need people to hear it, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And if, um, if you have any questions or anything whatsoever, come, uh, contact us through yeah. the, through the slide in our DMs. There y'all. you go. I'm like through our IG, Shoot your shot. Through, <laughs> <laughs> through the comments, whatever. We're family here. Okay. Yes. Shoot. But yeah. Love you guys. Love y'all.